We are here today to talk about COVID vaccines. But before we launch into the important information about the vaccines and try to answer most of your questions, let me share with you why this matters to the council. The North Carolina Council of Churches has long recognized that healthy people create healthy communities. We believe Jesus understood this when he willingly restored so many people to health for the primary reason that being healthy allowed them to rejoin their community. Being engaged in community is important for the individual who needs to be surrounded with support and with love, but it is also important for the community, which needs to have all the diversity and all the talent that is represented by each and every single person that lives among us. And so we are here today to learn about the steps we can all take to begin the process of being well as individuals and whole as a community. Let me introduce to you the director of the Council's Health and Wholeness Program, Chris Purnell. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jennifer. And welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. The Partners in Health and Wholeness Program works on many different areas of health, including a strong focus on substance use, mental health, and healthy aging. Our team partners with health ministries all over the state to assist in the needs that they've identified for their congregations and their communities. For over 10 years, that work has been in person, from the beach to the mountains, in your spaces, in events, large and small. In March of 2020, as we set to plan our next event, um, COVID arrived on the, on the scene. And we were, how do we do our work? How do we continue to support you in your work? What does health and wholeness ministries even look like when you can't be together safely? Well, yesterday I left our office to deliver our very first community grant, um, a small grant to three churches, a United Methodist Rural Church, uh, partnering with their local Presbyterian and Baptist churches in their efforts that have been going on all year to address the needs made so much worse by COVID. And part of this grant award was to add a, uh, additional refrigeration to the local Episcopal church that was helping with food distribution. I don't know about you, but I don't hear those, those all together very often, even in our, our faith communities. And I've been quite impressed with the effort in this community. In the very brief time I was there, the leader of the health ministry and the pastor were gathering food and supplies for an unhoused individual who was coming by to pick them up, working with a person who was com completing their community service and providing paperwork to the courts, arranging an installation of an ADA compliant bathroom fixture for somebody dealing with mobility issues, all the while talking about their next interfaith council meeting, trying to figure out what they could do about the growing um, homeless population in their area, largely due to COVID. And in between there, they were volunteering to be a resource for getting information out about the COVID vaccine and trying to find ways that they could help with transportation safely. So as we enter this presentation, I just wanna lift up the incredible work being done in neighborhoods all across this state. Whether the buildings are open or not, the church is definitely happening. And I would like to ask you to lend your support to our dedicated friends with the Department of Health and Human Services as they have been working so diligently on this effort. With that, I'd like to turn this over to Mariana Polk-Stewart, the director uh, with the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services of Economic Opportunity, and Carla West, the senior director of Economic Security Division of Social Services. Thank you both for your partnership and for being with us today. Thank you so much, Chris. And it's such a, uh, such a pleasure to be able to be with you today to talk about um, the vaccine efforts that are going on in North Carolina and answer any questions that you have. Uh, again, my name is Carla West and I, in addition to being Senior Director for Economic Security, I'm part of the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services COVID-19 response team. And I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing the PowerPoint. So Lindsay, I don't know if others are. So 
So uh, Mariana and I are here to share important information about the science and distribution of the COVID-19 vaccines. We also want to make sure we have time to hear and answer as many of your questions as possible. And we encourage you to use the chat box to ask your questions. And we'll be trying to answer as many as we go through the presentation that we can, but we'll also have some time at the end to answer questions as well. And we really thank our partners for being willing to uh, help us monitor the chat box. If you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. Um, uh, when you registered uh, for this presentation, one of the things we asked was what questions do you have? And so I have put into the chat, chat box a document listing the questions that we received through that registration and some answers. So um, uh, you can go ahead and look at that and, and, and we can touch on those during this presentation as well. Um, if we would go to the next slide. So the great news is that you will soon be able to take a safe vaccine to protect you from getting COVID-19. The great thing about this is the vaccine is free to everyone. Here's what you need to know about the vaccine. If we could go to the next slide. So in order to lead with equity, we know that we must build trust. We know that racism runs throughout our social, economic, and healthcare systems, causing unequal access to care, maltreatment, and neglect for our historically marginalized communities. These long-standing and continuing racial and ethnic uh, injustice, ethnic, sorry, injustices in our healthcare system contribute to a lack of trust in receiving the vaccine. So North Carolina is working hard to draw on the experience uh, and expertise of leaders from our historically marginalized communities across the state and across the nation to develop and implement its vaccine plan. I could go to the next slide. So we'll start with the key points. The vaccine is tested, it's safe, and it's affected. The COVID-19 vaccines are going to help us get back in control of our lives and get back to what we all believe is the most important thing, which is to be with the people and the places that we love. You know, many people ask, you know, are these safe? And, and how, how, are, how do I know they're safe? Because they've been rushed. I've heard this, um, the word warp speed, and does that mean that the vaccines are not safe to take? You know, the truth is that the scientists had a head start in this, and thousands of volunteers helped with the clinical trials. Um, actually, more volunteers than in a normal test environment participated in getting these vaccines tested, and the vaccines were tested and safe and effective. Another concern that we've heard is, you know, can I get COVID-19 from getting the vaccine? You cannot get COVID-19 vaccine 19 from this vaccine. So we'll talk about a little bit more about what's in that vaccine in just a minute. One of the things that you probably have heard on the news is that the supplies are limited and that's true. We do have a limited supply. So that's why we've prioritized who gets that shot. Those who are at most at risk get it first. But don't worry, you have a spot to take your shot. If we could go to the next slide. We'll dive a little bit more into each of these uh, points that are on this uh, slide. Um, but first, scientists had a head start building on decades of work to develop vaccines for similar vi viruses. Um, in fact, you, what you may not know is that one of the scientists who played a part in developing this vaccine is Dr. Kazmika Corbett. Uh, Dr. Kazmika Corbett is a native of North Carolina and one of the leading COVID-19 vaccine researchers. She holds several of the patents that um, are the basis of the COVID-19 vaccine. She's a viral immunologist at the Vaccine Research Center at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and the National Institutes of Health. 
Dr. Corbett's team began the first stage of clinical trials. They took the knowledge they gained in the last six years of research and applied it to a vaccine platform in collaboration with Moderna. The vaccine rolled out 10 months later. You may not know Dr. Corbett is from Hurdle Mills, North Carolina, so one of our very own. Those first two vaccines, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, use a method that researchers have been studying and working with for decades. If we could go to the next slide. The vaccines are tested, safe, and effective. All vaccines are regularly tested for safety and effectiveness. The vaccines have been through all of the same clinical trial steps as other vaccines and drugs that the FDA approves. More than 70,000 people volunteered in clinical trials for the two vaccines, Pfizer, Bio, BioNTech, and Moderna, to make sure that the vaccines were safe and worked to prevent COVID-19. To date, the vaccines are 95% effective in preventing COVID-19. This is higher and more effective than most scientists hope for. There are no serious safety concerns in the clinical trials with either of the vaccines. When you get your shot, you could have a temporary reaction like a sore arm or a headache or feeling tired and achy for a day or two. This could be similar to what you might have experienced with the shingles vaccine. These, vaccine, these reactions are temporary, which means they'll go away in a day or two. They are not dangerous, and they are actually a good sign that the vaccine is working in your body the way it's supposed to. We could go to the next slide. So with this rollout, there has been an intentional effort to recruit volunteers uh, from historically marginalized populations. When we say historically marginalized populations, we're talking about populations that have been hardest hit by COVID-19, including African Americans and Hispanic Latinx, Latinx populations. This pie chart shows the racial and ethnic background of people who volunteered for the cl two clinical trials. Historically marginalized populations are better represented in these vaccine trials than most clinical trials. Participation in trials has been higher than in most trials, and there are still opportunities to do more. Scientists continue to study the vaccine now that it's been, now that it's been given to millions of Americans from various backgrounds and with various medical conditions. We could go to the next slide. The way vaccines work by safely increasing your body's natural ability to fight the virus before the virus attacks you means that you cannot get COVID-19 from the vaccine. Here is how the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines work. First, vaccines imitate COVID without giving it to you. After you get the vaccine, the vaccine gives your body instructions to make a protein that safely teaches your body to make an antibody to fight the real COVID-19. Your body naturally breaks down or destroys the protein from that vaccine. This is also called a spike protein. With these antibodies, you will fight off the real virus if it tries to attack you. One of the questions we get is, is there a tracker in that vaccine? And I'm here to tell you there is no tracker in this vaccine. If we could go to the next slide. Two shots are necessary, and we have a plan to help everyone get both doses. The Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna vaccines require two shots to build up strong immunity against COVID-19. The second shot will come three to four weeks after the first. If you get the Pfizer vaccine, it's three weeks apart. And if you get the Moderna, it's four weeks apart. It is important to get two doses of the same vaccine. For example, you shouldn't get the Pfizer vaccine for the first dose and the Moderna vaccine for the second dose. We built a system. It's called the NC COVID-19 vaccine management system to help make sure people are safe and they get the right second dose at the right time. 
we could go to the next slide. Across the country, people are being vaccinated. Here in North Carolina, we're beginning to vaccinate people 65 and older in some counties. You can see two individuals from Wilson County here on the slide, including former Governor Jim Hunt getting his vaccine. We could go to the next slide. Representative Shelley Willingham received his vaccine when his local county began vaccinating people 65 and older. He is a current member of the House representing Edgecombe and Martin counties in the Northeast. He said when he got his vaccine, I want to be around my grandkids. I enjoy being out. The sooner people get vaccinated, the sooner we can finally get ahead of this. Just as more and more people began wearing masks, I think we'll see a growing number of people who want to get vaccinated to protect themselves and others. To talk a little bit more about the vaccine, I'm gonna turn it over to Mariana Polk-Stewart now. Mariana? Thank you. Um, so next slide, please. Your privacy and personal information are protected at all times. So nothing in the vaccine can be tracked. The protein your body makes cannot <clears throat> be tracked and it disappears after it finishes making you stronger. Personal information about your vaccination and health are protected at all times. We do not send any personal information to the CDC. North Carolina does not require an identification card, i.e. a driver's license to be vaccinated. Now, some employers or healthcare providers could request ID when limited vaccine has to be prioritized, but it is not required by the state. So earlier, um, Director West talked about the COVID management system. It is a system that enables the collection of immunization information for health and safety reasons. The, um, it may ask questions such as, uh, where did you get your vaccination? Uh, who gave it to you? Where did you receive it? I.e. in the muscle of your right arm, that kind of information. It may collect information regarding race and ethnicity which is necessary to support efforts for equitable vaccine distribution in North Carolina. Next slide. So vaccines will be available to all for free. Supplies will be limited at first. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccine has been authorized and sent to states, but it will B, sometime before they are widely available to everyone. State and federal public health experts recommend that the best way to fight COVID is to start first with vaccines aimed at helping to slow the spread and save lives. The vaccines are free, again, to everyone, even if you don't have health insurance. Rest assured, you absolutely have a spot to take the shot for the vaccination. The federal government is who is supporting and buying the vaccine for everyone. No vaccine provider should be charging anyone to receive the vaccine. Patients who get the vaccine while having an appointment for another reason, such as a medical checkup, may be charged for the checkup depending on their insurance. Providers administering the vaccine to people without health insurance or whose insurance does not provide coverage of the vaccine can absolutely request reimbursement for the administration of the COVID-19 vaccine through the Provider Relief Fund. Next slide. In North Carolina, this is how we are pri prioritize the COVID-19 vaccinations. Vaccines will be available to everyone, but currently supplies are limited and will continue to be limited for the next few months. Therefore, North Carolina, like other states, is making vaccines available in groups 
based on recommendations from independent state and federal public health advisory groups. Those five areas is what you see on your screen now. So we started with group one in mid-December, and that's the purple outlined, vaccinating our healthcare workers, fighting COVID, like those, and also those that are caring for COVID-19 patients or cleaning the rooms where COVID-19 patients are, and well as our long-term care staff and residents. We've started moving into group two. Vaccinations will be available to this group with priority given to those who are 75 and older. And then going forward in group three, frontline essential workers, examples of those workers include firefighters, our grocery store workers, teachers, and childcare workers. The CDC defines this list and it's on our website. So please keep in mind that there, are continue, there will continue to be limited supply as we move through these groups. <clears throat> I won't read the group's names because they are all available on our website. You'll find that we'll say this website throughout this whole presentation, yourspotyourshot.nc.gov. So you can find out which phase you or your family members will be eligible, which phase that you're in to be eligible to get vaccines. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Um, we don't know yet. It would depend on when we'll move into phase four. So it also depends on how much vaccine we get from the federal government. We are learning how many uh, vaccines, how many doses we'll get from the federal government on a weekly basis. So it makes it hard for us to forecast the future. Next slide. <clears throat> Our goal is to vaccinate as many people as quickly as possible, given the limited supply of vaccines. North Carolina moves through vaccination groups by aligning with the federal priorities while empowering local health departments and hospitals with flexibility to move to the next priority group as they complete groups and have vaccines available. We know people are curious about what's happening right now with COVID-19 vaccinations. The people who are getting COVID-19 vaccines in North Carolina this month are, again, our healthcare workers, such as our doctors, nurses, and those caring for and cleaning areas, long-term care staff and residents, people living and working in places like skilled nursing facilities or group homes, how healthcare workers are being vaccinated in hospitals or local health departments that have received early shipments of the vaccine. The federal government manages vaccinations for most long-term care facilities. Most will be vaccinated at their facilities under the Pharmacy Partnerships for Long-Term Care Program with CVS and Walgreens. Our vaccine providers who are ready to start vaccinating older adults, 65 years and older, can begin doing so. The way to get vaccinated remains the same. Because vaccine supplies are still limited, those 65 and over may have to wait, but they have one of the first spots to take their shot. If you are 65 and older or assisting someone who is, here's how to take your shot against COVID-19. Supplies are very limited right now. Very few vaccine doses are available. You'll need an appointment to get vaccinated. You may have to wait to schedule your appointment to get your vaccine. Your local health department or hospital can help you get your shot. Because supplies are very limited, again, most doctors cannot provide vaccinations in their office. It's imperative that you find your local health department or hospital. You can visit the NC vaccine website, health departments and hospitals, giving vaccinations in your area. You can search by zip code or county to find locations and contact information. 
You can also call the COVID-19 line at, and it's, show, it's shown on your screen, 1-877-490-6642. It's a free call. The COVID-19 line is managed by Community Care of North Carolina. Next slide, please. North Carolina gets shipments of the vaccine each week. The federal government decides how much COVID-19 vaccine each state gets based on the state's population. North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services then determines which vaccine providers, i.e. hospitals, local health departments, or clinics will receive vaccine doses based on their ability to reach prioritized populations, such as our healthcare workers or long-term care workers. The manufacturers, Pfizer or Moderna, ships the vaccines and vaccination supply kits to the local vaccine providers here in North Carolina. North Carolina is working closely with providers to safely store and handle the vaccines, especially those that need ultra cold storage or frozen storage. Vaccines will be available first in hospitals, local health departments, and long-term care facilities, and then in a variety of settings like clinics, pharmacies, and vaccination events in prioritized settings and in the community. Next slide, please. You may be wondering, how will I know when and where it's my turn to get my vaccination shot. If you're a healthcare worker, you should talk with your employer about how to get vaccinated. If you're a long-term care staff member or resident, you should talk with your facility about how to get that vaccination. For older adults, 65 and older, health departments and hospitals are beginning to offer vaccination appointments there will likely be a wait to receive your vaccine, but older adults will have one of the first spots to get that vaccination. They should contact their local health department or hospital if they have questions. According to availability and how far they have gotten with vaccinating healthcare workers and those in long-term care, health departments and hospitals will start vaccinating older adults in group two. Again, additional information on where to take your shot is available at the website, yourspotyourshot.nc.gov. Special note again that many primary care providers do not currently have the vaccine. Those who do not have an employer or residence facility that is providing their vaccine should contact their local health department or hospital. Next slide, please. We are working hard to keep North Carolinians informed so they can take their shot against COVID-19. Look for information at news conferences where our secretary, Secretary Mandy Cohen, provides the most up-to-date information on our website, social media, and from trusted community leaders such as yourselves. Community leaders and organizations are helping to shape the campaign and are reaching out to the public. The goal is to provide all North Carolinians with a place for honest information and updates on where they can get their vaccinations. Next slide, please. Shown here are just a few examples of leading medical and professional organizations encouraging Americans to get vaccinated. Next slide, please. We want to emphasize that NCDHHS COVID-19 vaccine website, your spot, yourshot.nc.gov is where you can find the most up-to-date information. We are adjusting our plans and materials as we learn new things every day from the federal government about the vaccines. 
I want to point out some materials that you can start using now. We have a one page flyer on the COVID-19 vaccine that hits the highlights of this presentation today. You can start distributing that to your network. We also have a great list of frequently asked questions. Please let us know if you have questions that you don't see answered there as we update it at least weekly. We also have a vaccine one-on-one -on -one deck for more information about the vaccine and the graphics on the prioritizations that I showed you in this presentation. We trust that you go to the website because as things are fluid and changes, even the deck, the most, um, the deck slides that you're seeing today, you want to go to the website and to ensure that you're getting the most up-to-date information in getting this PowerPoint presentation. We also have PSA videos on our website from Trusted Messengers. Next slide, please. Many of us are still waiting for our spot to take our shot, but in the meantime, we urge you to keep practicing the three W's. Getting the COVID-19 vaccine and following the three W's is everyone's best protection from getting and spreading COVID-19. Seeing vaccinations underway gives us hope at the end of a hard year, but this virus continues to be extremely contagious and deadly. We need to persevere and keep using our tried and true safety precautions. Continue using the three W's and limiting social gatherings until most people are vaccinated. Getting back in control, getting back to family and friends and getting kids back to school will take some time, but the COVID-19 vaccine and the three W's will get us there quicker and safer. Next slide, please. We're asking for your help to share information with those in your communities. Help direct people to their spot for reliable information about the vaccine. Maybe it's you now that you have new vaccine knowledge. Show people that you trust the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine. Share your positive experience when you have your shot against COVID-19. Use and share the COVID-19 vaccine communication materials to make sure more North Carolinians have accurate and up-to-date information on the vaccine. Find them at yourspotyourshot.nc.gov. Next slide, please. What questions do you have that Director West and myself could ask, answer for you? And one of the things that we absolutely want to ensure is if we don't have the answer to your questions today or right now, we'll get an answer and we'll get it back to you by end of day, or at least when you wake up on Monday morning, it'll be in your box. How about that one? <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. So I I did see one question in here, Chris, um, from Micah Royal, if you wouldn't mind me going ahead and addressing now. Yes, please. Micah asked that he sees in the document in the deep dive of group three, that clergy are on phase three, and was asking whether or not this would include all church employees or just clergy. And then went on to ask if the church needed to contact the health department to notify them who our employees are so they can be added to the list. Um, my hospice had to do some things with the health department to get me added as a list. Such a great question, Micah. Um, I was sharing with um, uh, the Council of Churches group uh, right before that, that you guys are like the first ones to know that that deeper dive on group three uh, was posted last night on our website uh, talking about the definition of frontline essential workers and including uh, members of the clergy in that group 
if they um, are having, having to interact with people as part of their work. I will caution you, however, that we are not in group free three at this time. At this moment, the state of North Carolina is still in group two, which includes uh, anyone 65 and older. Um, and then of course, group one, which includes all health uh, uh, care workers, member people who are in long-term care facilities and people who uh, work in long-term care facilities as Mariana had pointed out earlier. So there will be an announcement when the state is ready to move into group three. Um, I just need to remind you all that the vaccines are very, very limited. Um, and so, um, you know, it may be, uh, I don't know when they're going to move into group three, but it will be once they feel like they have enough vaccine and they have, um, are ready to move from second group to third group. I don't know how you did it with the hospice, but I would, I would say once you know that we have moved into group three, um, you can go to your spot, yourshot.gov, which is um, linked here in our webs, our PowerPoint presentation, uh, and go to your particular county to see how you would get signed up to get your vaccine at that time. Um, so I just, I appreciate you that question and, uh, and the opportunity to ensure that uh, we may let you know that it is going to include clergy that interact with the public, um, but it is not, um, we are not in group three right now. Thank you so much, Carla. That is very good news and we appreciate the advocacy and the response very much to that question. Um, we have a lot of questions. There was a, a lot of data coming at you and so many resources shared and more to come your way. So I'm going to, if, if I missed that one of these is already answered, please just go ahead and, and remind me. But um, let's see, one of the first questions was, could the church itself be used as a clinic site for the vaccine? Most churches have large fellowship halls, parking lots, uh, most people trust their churches, so it seems like a win-win situation for reaching all parts of our population. Such a great question, and one of the things that North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services is working on right now is, is working with partners in our community to set up that mass vaccine sites. Um, one of the slides that will be shared with you in just a moment are way, uh, ways that uh, your uh, congregation can help, and that is definitely one of those ways that you can help. Also, there's a link, and I'm going to post it here in the chat. Um, also, in going to, um, it'll be on a slide that we'll share in just a moment of ways where if you would want to have us do this presentation for your congregation, um, or if you are interested yourself in becoming a presenter of this Vaccine 101 uh, training, you can sit, um, sign up on that form and, um, and let us know that you are interested in doing that. For, for congregations who are interested in um, I'm not sure that that link worked, so I'll, I'll try that again in just a minute. Talking and doing it at the same time is hard, but, <laughs> but uh, um, for congregations who are interested in that, uh, be on the lookout. We will be reaching out when we get to that phase. Right now, the, the issue is that it requires um, a, a freezer capacity, and in, in the uh, case of the Pfizer vaccine, ultra cold storage, and that really does uh, limit uh, where we are able to do um, mass vaccination sites. Thank you, Lindsay. But um, but definitely we want to work with uh, congregations across the state when we are able to make sure that the vaccine can be safely and effectively delivered to to set up those types of sites. Awesome. Thank you, Carl. Um, so someone stated it was their understanding that even if vaccinated, you may still be a carrier of COVID, which does limit the ability to get together again in person based on herd immunity. Can you speak to that? 
I can. So getting um, the vaccine definitely uh, prevents or, or, or provides um, a, 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 I'm trying to think of the word and I'm stumbling over. <laughs> I really do apologize for that. But it does build in an immunity in yourself up to 95% after you receive that second shot. Usually takes about 15 days after that second shot for um, you to see the full impacts. But until the majority of uh, the people are vaccinated, it is still very, very important for you to continue to follow the safe practices and follow the three Ws, wearing a mask, washing your hands continuously or using hand sanitizer and waiting at least six feet apart. Um, not only keeps you safe, but it keeps those around you safe um, as well until we can build that enough people in the US who have that immunity. That's the safest way to be able to interact with each other. Awesome, thank you so much, Carl. Um, a great question and one I've heard often is, do we know how long the vaccine will last in the body before we make it a booster or another vaccine? That's a great question. Um, and Mariana, I don't know if you have the answer right in front of you. If not, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. Um, I don't know. It's how long yes. it will last. Yes. <laughs> that was a question. Um, so the, the answer received from our SMEs were since the Pfizer and Moderna trials just ended, we know that the vaccine can protect people from COVID-19 illness for at least two months. We'll know even more about how long the immunity from the vaccines lasts as people have been vaccinated for a longer period of time. Okay. All right, um, kind of a follow-up. If someone has had COVID-19, do they still need to get the vaccine? Um, so the, de the vaccine works to protect you against future infection. You don't need a COVID-19 test before getting vaccinated, but it is safe to get vaccinated with the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine if you have had COVID-19 in the past. Um, there is additional information on the NCDHHS website for both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. So yes, it is still, if you've had it, it is safe for you to get the test. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, a little deeper into the phase three question about pastors. Will church employees qualify for that or just clergy? And is there action that the church needs to take with the health department to get folks on the list if that's possible? So I, I did see uh, um, that that um, question, the person who asked that question came back and said that they, you know, had worked with their health department at the time and said, maybe we need to wait till group three to reach out. I would agree with that. As far as other church um, members, um, according to the to the document, the deeper dive that was posted in here, if they have interactions with the public and they are members of the clergy, they are eligible. And I would think that that you would define that um, if you have a um, uh, somebody on your staff who is interacting as part of your um, faith outreaches, then. Um, I would I would say talk to your talk, talk to your local health department about that, but I would say yes. Okay, I have a, um, a question and a concern. Someone working with an at-risk elderly person in getting the vaccine and tying into a question about is there a plan for homebound folks who have you know, struggles getting to a vaccination site? Mm -hmm. Such a great question. Um, the governor announced, I believe it was yesterday, that we are working on developing uh, ways for individuals who have lack of transportation to be able to get to it free. We're also working with our Division of Aging and Adult Services to see how we can reach out to homebound elderly um, um, people and, and, and how they can get the vaccine. There are ways that you can help 
um, you know, and assisting on getting that uh, vaccine, you could make sure that people have reliable information about um, where to sign up for the shot and how and when they are eligible. You know, sometimes we have um, people who don't have access to technology, so you could help them by scheduling those appointments and getting those vaccines, help them with transportation. Um, and then again, there's gonna be a survey here at the end if you're willing to host any presentations or help us um, in delivering these presentations is another great way to get out information. Wonderful. Um, one, another question that I've also heard is, what about folks with underlying health conditions? Are all of them, if they are under 65, are they all in phase four? or are there any opportunities to get the vaccination sooner? So if, if for those with underlying health um, conditions, if they haven't previously fallen under one of the first three groups, they would be in group four. So- um, See, I haven't heard anything about groups three and four of you. What's that? I'm sorry. Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but uh, I will say that um, people with underlying health conditions are in group four. Um, but if they fall into any of the other groups one through three, then they would be eligible to get the shot earlier than that. Okay. All right. Um, and I think we heard someone have a comment about needing more information on what groups three and four are. And that is in all of the resources that we've sent out. But if you have anything specific, uh, please type it in the chat box and we'd be happy to address it right now. And I'm going to ask my colleagues if I missed any questions that have come in. My eyes are darting in different screens. Did I miss anything or does anyone have another question that was not addressed? Uh, the question did come up again about using church facilities that have largely sat empty during this crisis as a vaccination site or a mobile site. And I know we have talked about that. Um, maybe we can just keep everybody up to date if something like that does happen or if there are opp more opportunities to help out. Um, but I think at this time that is not happening. Is that right, Carla? I'm sorry, I was responding to a private question and I totally missed that. Was That's okay. That? Sorry. I, I, I think, I think um, the answer Carla, Director West said earlier, were the, um, as we move into community-based vaccination sites, the form that she put out there where you could go to the link asking if you want to be a trainer, asking um, you know if you wanted the presentation at your individual congregations uh, through Zoom. Also, if your church is willing to be a vaccination site, that's another area that you can complete that form and put that on there. So as the vaccine comes in in uh, multitudes, and we just going to believe that one, then we need to get out into the community. We already have, a, or Carla already has a list or a cadre of entities that are willing to use their sites or their church buildings as a vaccination site. So if you know that you are, or you know that the church you attend would like to be considered, then I will put that on that form um, that Director West sent out in the chat. Yes, what? and I also just put my email address in the chat box. Um, so if you if you are interested in that and you want to email me and give me more information, I will make sure that we share that information with our colleagues at NCDHHS who are working hard to get these vaccination sites set up. Um. Hi, I'm Nicole Johnson. I'm a Partners in Health and Wholeness. I just wanted to, to pick out a couple questions that were floating pretty early on in the chat. Um, somebody was mentioning um, that they'd heard uh, there were rumors about a tracker being in the vaccine. 
And I would just like you to, to say this out loud just for folks on the call. <laughs> um, just, yeah, talking about that one. And then there's another question about how exactly this mRNA vaccine works that they heard it changes your DNA. And there is somebody who has a biology degree on the call who's also a pastor and she did answer in the chat, but I would just like you to maybe just say out loud in kind of simple words, just one, how it works, and then two, about whether or not there's a tracker in the vaccine. Yeah. I think that's a common um, rumor about there being a tracker uh, uh, in the vaccine, um, but there is no uh, tracker built into the vaccine. I think what I have heard that some people have confused is when you do get the vaccine, you will get a card that will let you know when your next um, shot is set up and that is used to track from when you got the first shot to make sure that you get the second shot and that you're scheduled. And I think because of that form, I mean that little card that people are getting, often people think that means that there is a tracker, but it really, there is no tracking in that vaccine. As far as does it change your DNA, I thought the answer that uh, Amanda Rackley put in here was a perfect answer. In fact, I copied it for me to use <laughs> in other presentations because uh, she's absolutely right. It will not change your DNA. It's an MR are in a vaccine. Um, and I believe Mariana went through that in the slides talking about what that means. Um, and But I, I thought the answer in here that she put was obviously far above my head as being um, a physician uh, that um, so there is no there is no concern that it will change uh, your DNA, nor is there a tracker built in it. This has been a safe and tested and reliable vaccine um, that is intended to help build your immunity against COVID nineteen. Wonderful. Okay, um, there's some some last minute chats coming in. Uh, Dr. Hardy in Franklin County says their, their church would be willing to serve as a site, so we will capture that information. Thank you so much, sir. And Dawn, uh, John, thank you very much for that and the willingness to host a town hall. We will capture all of these responses and, and look at them and get back with you. Is Are there any more questions, comments? Anyone would like to offer before we send it off to our executive director, Jennifer Copeland, for a sending blessing? All right, I'm not seeing any hands or hearing any voices. So it's back to you, Jennifer. Thank you. Then Carla, Mariana, thank you so much. You're thank you. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you, Carla and Mariana, and all of you who have joined us today to learn more about this important vaccine. Hear this lament from the British Methodist Church. How shall we praise you, Lord, our God, when we are locked down? How shall we praise you when the doors to your houses are barred and your people cannot assemble? When those desperately in need of money and work cannot even wait in the marketplace? When we have to circle round people in the street and to queue for shops maintaining safe distance, how shall we praise you, Lord, our God? And this is our response from the North Carolina Council of Churches and all of you who have been so faithful through this long, dark winter. We shall praise you, O oh Lord, by giving thanks for the workers who show up each day in our groceries, pharmacies, and other places that sell us the things we need to live. We shall praise you by giving thanks for our public servants, police, firefighters, fighters, and others who show up every day and pledge to keep us safe, even as they keep their distance from us. We shall praise you by giving thanks for the healthcare workers, nurses, physicians, aides, and others who show up every day to care for those of us who are not well, even while they endanger their own health. We shall praise you by giving thanks for the neighbors who check on each other, who run errands, offer solace, and continue to weave the strong strands that knit us together as a community. 
For these and more, we will praise you. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>